So season four roadmap is here and we're gonna go through all the various things that they're adding to Warzone multiplayer and zombies. So this is the new weapons. We get four new armaments for all basically the modes. The Superi 46 submachine gun, this will be available at launch. Uh, it kind of looks like the, like the shotgun, right? The riveter. Uh, pistol caliber carbine chambered four, six, okay. And then the car 98 K. This will be in the free part of the battle pass at sector five and that has 16 levels. All right, hopefully it's good. People are gonna be pissed. The Reclaimer, that comes out mid-season. And then we get a Sledgehammer, which is mid-season as well. So that's the four weapons. And we'll get some aftermarket parts, which could be interesting. Uh, out of the eight or so that we get per season, usually it's only like one or two are pretty good. And everything else is like, eh. So it's really interesting. There'll be a lot of those. And I'm really glad they continue to support that. We got Black Cell. Oh, the, the Weapon Prestige Camo. They continued it for season four, which we already kind of had an idea. They're basically giving us Obsidian, right? Time to put back your double XP tokens, work along. All right. They need to stop screwing us over on this. It has been tested that you only get 1.3x on these. They're not actually double. They need to stop calling it double. Okay, and lock the one trick, which is the season three one, and then you'll be uh, this will be available for this one after. So earn 200,000 XP. So it's actually more. Holy, you got to grind. Additionally, uh, optionally, use your double XP tokens to work towards your unlock. All right, cool. I mean, I'm all for this. This is just extra content for your favorite guns that you'll get maxed out. You don't got to do it on every gun. You just do it on the ones that are quote unquote meta that you're going to use all the time and then you can kind of enjoy it. I'll leave a link to what I'm reading in the description if you want to go ahead and check out the trailer or go ahead and kind of read through it at your own pace. Modern Warfare 3, we get three brand new 6v6 maps, which is cool. They've been giving tons of support to multiplayer. We get Tokyo, that'll be at launch right away. It's a mid-sized map. Uh, we also get Paris, mid-sized map. That'll be available right away as well. Then in the mid-season, we get Incline and Das Gross, which will be kind of interesting for that map. And then multiplayer, we're going to get a few modes. We get Demolish. Havoc, get cranked. Okay, couple there. Cranked. I wonder if that's gonna be similar to like regular cranked. Uh demolition will be at launch. Cranked will be at launch, and then we also get havoc in the mid-season. Game mode headshots only in the mid-season. That'll be kind of interesting. You can only hit headshots. Playlist modifier, all game modes. That'll be huh? Looping kill streaks. What? Whoa, earning kill streaks. Your point added to your streak if you slay an enemy with your kill streak. Oh, this is like old school COD. Killstreak cash. When a player is eliminated, they drop a cash containing a percentage of their earned killstreak progress. Grab the cash and add it to your own. That's crazy. Critical countdown event items. During the forthcoming critical countdown events, expect enemies to drop blank in-game items that can be collected to more quickly progress the event. All right. So that's like a community event type thing. Game modes, additional content. Um, it says, with the arrival of Das Gross, expect... Another Vortex Mosh Pit and yet another unveiled content uh, will have you in bits. Plus, summon your best buds as the synth wave. Sunset makes another limited time appearance with revamped return of the get high. Cool. Finally, expect mutation mode to fully embrace the forthcoming countdown event in a variety of surprising ways. So the countdown event is probably just a community-based event like on that weekly rotator that we've had for a while here where you got to do the specific challenges, get XP but this one will be community based and it'll have probably a longer time period. Multiplayer ranked launch window. They use that's a day or two after uh, you get your rewards and stuff like that. Those are the rewards for this particular season. Uh, and then you get all the division stuff. All right. New perks that'll be available at launch. We get a mission control vest it says equipment slot six tactical lethal field upgrade gloves gear. Get two of those reduce kill required by one. So it's like a hard line. Earn one kill or 125 score for every two kill assist or crossfire assist. All right, that's just hard line uh, pro or whatever. Duplicate effects do not stack. All right, compression plate. Immediately regenerate health after a primary, secondary throwing knife kill. That's quick fix. Then we get a new kill streak intelligent munition system. It says for seven kills, munition system loaded with smart explosives that eliminate enemy personnel and vehicles within range when triggered it will eject an explosive upward which then locks onto a target and propels toward them all right i don't know it looks like it's this then it shoots up and then shoots down 
New killstreak loitering munition. An unmanned rocket equipped drone loiters over the target area on each activation. The drone selects the target location with the largest number of viable targets to bombard the rocket with. Uh, missile drone. It says a small piloted drone controlled by players that fire guided missiles. New killstreak, a DNA bomb at launch. I wonder how that's going to be different. Unlike the MGB, the DNA bomb does not conclude the match. Oh, so you'll be able to get that and just keep going. It doesn't say how many kills though. Probably 35 or whatever it is. So then we move on to zombies, which again is going to just be a mid season thing. This has kind of been their ongoing theme for the entirety of the year. Unstable rip. We'll get in that in the mid season. And then we'll be able to do some stuff. I'm sure we'll get more content to cover that. Unfortunately, that's pretty much it for the zombies with the beginning of season four. I will have to wait until the mid season and they'll talk a little bit more about what you get in that. And then we get Warzone. So current map intel and updates. Combat across Urzikstan, Rebirth Island, Fortune's Cape, Bondo continues with no major points of interest appear to have changed. The discovery of mysterious DNA bomb at Popov Power leaves you and your squad a little time to discover incoming threats. This truth may not be immediately obvious, but as the season progresses, additional discoveries may cause a significant shift in your plans. Uh, and, and it's funny, they didn't say anything about Ashika. So Ashika is probably gone, right? If it's not as obvious, it's probably gone. Urzikstan bunker update launch. Increased activity across Urzikstan seems to be focused on the bunkers dotted across Warzone. After keycard access is obtained, an expanded interior may be accessible along with a high level loot and additional intel regarding the location of blank. Secondary bunker exit hatches are likely to be active, allowing your squad multiple methods of escape. However, not all bunkers appear to be accessible. Further investigation and great care is needed to solve the conundrum. So I wonder if there's going to be Easter eggs on the big map. Same thing that we had in Verdansk where you had to put a specific code in or you had to go from here and you had to rotate over there with the card. There'll be more stuff to figure out. Additional Gulag silos have opened up during Urzikstan Battle Royale matches and recon teams have confirmed four different variants. Expect to randomly drop into one of them, offering you new ways to approach your 1v1 duel for redeployment. All right, cool. They just modified some of the stuff. That That's, uh, it could be better. I mean, we can get new Gulags, but that works oh so these are like one two there's the two and then this is the third one this is how that'll look and then the silo eight variant all right cool so warzone modes and public events returning mode buyback royale solos interesting if as long as you have the four thousand in cash wonder if that'll be slightly changed you'll be able to come back additional modes in season spec group cortec operators cross multiple infill zones should expect additional blank and a number of redacted modes as the season progresses. Exercise extreme caution as you investigate blank. One step closer to the truth. New features. Warzone rewards launch. As well as daily and weekly Call of Duty rewards, a third set of brand new rewards specifically tailored to Call of Duty Warzone players will be available at launch. All of which are trackable. And some of which unlock some of the most coveted rewards around accessible in Call of Duty Warzone Rewards section of the challenge menu. There are five different types of challenges to complete, each granting a reward. Economics. These offer rewards in return for looting and spending cash. Contracts unlock the completing cash and certain number of contracts. Okay, social. Interact with enemy players or aid your team to secure more item rewards. Mode. Complete task in different modes. Battle Royale, Plunder, Resurgence. Then Champion's Quest in a Champion's Quest active in your game. Then check these challenges out. All right. Additional. It doesn't say what the rewards are though, right? Uh, additional access feature specialist perk. Uh, operators dropping in Urzikstan can now obtain the legendary most prized perk possession, the specialist perk suitcase. In addition to default perks available to all operators, TACPAD uh, goes through all of them, you get all the perks, but only remainder of the match. Perk 1, 2, it just tells you what the perks are, we know what specialist is. So there's a new feature, tactical sprint boots. Urzikstan based operators can look forward to infiltrating any of the accessible bunkers to obtain the tactical sprint boot perk which will give you unlimited increase to your tactical sprint speed and reduction in fall damage. So it's that gummy, it's the green gummy. They've added it in as a perk 
that you have to get from the bunker. That should be interesting. Um, new vehicle, we get the Polaris. Um, if the, is that sponsored? That vehicle is going to work well. The ultimate combination of power and strength and control has arrived. Okay, nice. Loot hot zones. This is something we also had in Warzone 1. Design points of interest and map to identify as loot hot zones. Get there before the enemy and you'll be rewarded with higher tier loot than normal. Just be prepared for a vicious battle over who gets to claim the enhanced gear. New blank and weapons mid-season. All right. Cool. Um, new public events. Runaway train. That'll be mid-season as well. It's like Slay Ride Resurgence. That's cool. Slay Ride Resurgence had the little save zone, the gas move on it. Uh, it's totally different. That could be kind of annoying for some people, but I think it's cool as a thing. Uh, Warzone Rank Resurgence. What? Not big map? Call of Duty Rank Resurgence continues on Rebirth Island. Rule sets remain the same. Drop in. Why? I don't get it. I don't get it. It must be really popular. I don't get it, though. <laughs> all right you get all those rewards warzone mobile overview and then all right not the most exciting uh blog in my opinion i think we've had some more interesting stuff uh, i'm really most interested in the shakeup of the meta when it comes to warzone uh warzone has been uh incredibly stale with the meta we got like two guns to use on occasion so that's kind of where we are at let me know your thoughts appreciate all the support thank you for watching as always have a great day